hope everyone is having a happy Sunday. Our lesson for today that's in preparation for tomorrow would be stretching and compressing graphs of functions. So think about stretching a, say for example, an elastic ball and compressing an elastic ball. What would it look like? So that's what we're going to do with functions in this unit. We're going to try to figure out as well when would it stretch and when would it compress. And of course, we have two kinds of stretch and compression. We have vertical and horizontal. Now take a look at this graph here. I'm going to change screen in a bit and I'm going to let you see the graphing calculator. We're going to try to... Um, see how would the graph of y equals x squared look like if we're going to change your a value here to the different values that you have been given here. Okay, so here we go. We have entered all those um, new equations in our graphing calculator and we'll see what will happen to your graphs if we are going to change your a value. So our first one would be just the normal x squared and then we change all these values. So see how it would look like. You may take that down in the notes that, um, in this page that we're working on right now. So if we hit graph here, your blue line here, your blue um, parabola I mean, is the graph of y equals x squared. The red one is a graph of 0.5 x squared. So this is 0.5 x squared here. And the black one is 2x squared. So we can see that if we're adding a number that's 0.5 to your x squared, it will have a vertical compression. Your graph is compressed vertically. So think about there's a big rock that hit your blue parabola here and then it compressed vertically. So vertically is coming up here. And this one here, your um, black graph here, is 2x squared. So when we added the constant 2 on your x squared, your graph was vertically stretched. So somebody pulling up that blue graph here and it, it would become your black graph here. On the other hand, the negative 0.5x squared, so now we're mixing your reflection and your stretch here. When we have 0.5x squared, it will create this purple graph here. And if we have negative 2x squared, it will create this green graph here. So your purple graph is a reflection of your red graph here. And your green graph is a reflection of your um, black graph here. So again, the black graph was vertically stretched. And your red graph it was vertically compressed. Your pink graph is vertically compressed and reflected. Your green graph was vertically stretched and reflected across the x-axis. In this next slide, we're introducing two constants. And just take note, there's the first one where A is outside of your function and B is a constant beside your x in your function. So let's see how those constants would affect your graph. So let's look at your first graph here. Your calcul um, graphing calculator has done those for you. You can explore it yourself. This is your original function y equals root x. When we added a constant 1 half outside of your function, then this point here becomes this point here. So let's see this point is 4. It's not 4. We're going to start with x. This point here is 16, 4. And when it was added with a half constant here, your 16, 4 becomes 16, 2. And notice that this green graph here, your that point became 16, 8. So the influence of your uh, a value here, which is 2, is directed to the y value. 
of your function. So if your function has 16, 4, your x it was the same, but your y value was doubled. If your function became or has a constant 1 half root x, the 4 here became half of it, which is 2. But your x values are all the same. If we're going to explore these other functions, it would be the same. Now, we're going to look at your second graph here where your value would be b. Now, your original function y equals root x is here. If we are looking into adding half x, this expression here has 4, 2. Now, your value now became a 2. And let's look at your green graph here, which is root 2x. This value became 2, 2. Now, if we're going to look at those numbers, your y values are the same, but your x values were different. Particularly, when we had half of x, your x value was doubled. And when we had 2x, your y value, your x value was half of your original x value. So this time, when you have a b expression here, if you have a b constant, your y value stays the same, but your x values would be different. Take note of how it affected your original function. It was the opposite. If it was half of x, your x value was doubled. If it was 2x, your x value was half. Okay, we can explore these combinations later, but we're going to move on to your next slide. Okay, for this slide here, I'm going to show you a quick video of how your transformation occurred, particularly reflection and compression and stretch occurred in the function y equals x cubed. So just take your notes here, and I'll show you the video. Consider the graph of y equals x cubed. Now consider the graph of y equals 1 half x cubed. Look at the points where the graphs intersect the vertical line x equals 2. On y equals x cubed, the point of intersection, a, is 2, 8. On y equals 1 half x cubed, the point of intersection, b, is 2, 4. The y-coordinate of point b is 1 half the y-coordinate of point a. This will be true for any point on y equals x cubed, and the point with the same x-coordinate on y equals 1 half x cubed. <coughs> so, the graph of y equals 1 half x cubed is the image of the graph of y equals x cubed after a vertical compression by a factor of 1 half. Now consider the graph of y equals 2x cubed. Look at the points where the graphs intersect the vertical line x equals 2. On y equals x cubed, the point of intersection a is 2, 8. On y equals 2x cubed, the point of intersection c is 2, 16. The y-coordinate of point C is two times the y-coordinate of point A. This will be true for any point on y equals x cubed, and the point with the same x-coordinate on y equals 2x cubed. So, the graph of y equals 2x cubed is the image of the graph of y equals x cubed after a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Now consider the graph of y equals negative 2x cubed. Look at the points where the graphs intersect the vertical line x equals 2. On y equals x cubed, the point of intersection a is 2, 8. On y equals negative 2x cubed, the point of intersection d is 2, negative 16. The y-coordinate of point d is negative 2 times the y-coordinate of point A. This will be true for any point on y equals x cubed, 
and the point with the same x-coordinate on y equals negative 2x cubed. So, the graph of y equals negative 2x cubed is the image of the graph of y equals x cubed after a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 and a reflection in the x-axis. Okay, this next slide is going to show you a very cool dynamic activity of what's the effect of um, adding an a value in your f of x and adding a b value inside your x here and probably you're going to explore on combining both um, expressions. So this one gives you a vertical stretch or compression, this one gives you a horizontal stretch or compression, and this one would be both. Okay, now let's study y equals root x here. Now your normal root x would be just Ooh, that would be 1, somewhere there, I couldn't move it to 1. But see how our graph would change if we change the a values to a bigger number. Notice how your x's are different, but your y's move, the y values move. So it stayed at x equals 1 this point here but your y values go up and down so that's stretching it vertically on the other hand if we have small va values your x still is at 1 but your y values are smaller so it was compressed vertically and if you go lower down it's going to be reflected on the x-axis see how your graph would change there you go bet you want to play around with this one too Let's have this one here now. Okay, see how your y value is always at 1 and your x, your y value, this point here, the y value would always be at 1 and your x values would be different. And you would see, if you have negative, this point jumps off to the other quadrant. It means it became a reflection of the original point. See? There you go. There. Let's see for both. Okay, seven. Okay, you can play around with with that one, with those values, but um, we're gonna. We have seen the effect of your A and B here. Now let's look at example 1 and let's draw a rough sketch of what will happen to our graph. So your graph would have y equals negative 3 g of x. It's from y equals a g of x. So we see that your a value there is negative 3. What does negative 3 mean? So this one, since your number is outside of the function, it will be a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. And the negative there meant a reflection on the x-axis. So what do we mean when we say vertical stretch by a factor of 3? Your points there, let's draw a quick xy table here and let's look at specific points. So let's start with negative 2, plot negative 3. Okay, I'm almost out of time here because each video is only 15 minutes, so I'm going to make another one that's continuation of the examples here. Um, just know that when a is negative 3, it will affect your y value. So your y value will be multiplied by the factor negative 3, and your x value stays the same.